Okay, hi friends, welcome to our channel, The Dental Educators. In today's lecture, we will be discussing about different landmarks which we see on the tooth surfaces. So, we know that there are different things which we will discuss today. So, starting with the first landmark, which is known as the cusp. So, how do you define the cusp? The cusp is defined as an elevation or the mound on the crown portion of a tooth, making up the divisional part on the occlusal surfaces. So, you can see in this image, the blue portions which we have marked on the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth, they are referred as the cusp. So when you look this video demonstration, we can see here, starting with the premolars, we have the cusp on the premolars and we have some cusp which we see on the molars as well. Okay, so you can see they are marked with blue colors on each individual tooth in the first quadrant. So in some teeth you have two cusps, in some teeth like in the second molar which we are looking at, we have three or four cusp accordingly so the cusp which we see in the first quadrant on the teeth are similar to the cusp which we see in the second quadrant as well when the premolars and the molars similarly in the mandibular teeth as well we can see the blue marked area which are representing the cusp so we have some cusp which are present in the premolars and in the molars as well. So look like in the third molar in the third quadrant, you can see we have four cusps. In the second molar as well, we have one, two, three, four, four cusps. Now in the first mandibular molar, we can see we have five different cusps. Whereas if we further on go on to the premolars, you can see we have two different cusps on each of the premolar. That is the first and the second premolar. Now as we see these cusp in the third quadrant teeth, we can see that these cusps are also present in the molars and premolars which are present in the fourth quadrant. So do remember that, that the cusps are always present in the posterior teeth. Now the second landmark is the tubercle. How do you define the tubercle? Tubercle is defined as a smaller elevation on some portion of the crown produced by an extra formation of enamel. These are deviations from typical form like these are not normal kind of a structure these are atypical kind of a structures which are different so you can see here in the second maxillary molar tubercle is marked now going on to the next structure that is known as the cingulum so what is a cingulum cingulum is the convexity on the lingual lobe of anterior tooth making up the bulk of this cervical third of the lingual surface so we can see so the red portions in this image are making the different portions just in the anterior teeth that is the canine and the incisor which are referred as the singular now going to the video demonstration you can see on the lingual surface in the cervical third area the red marked portions in the incisors and in the canines these are referred as the singular in the maxillary arch similar to that we have some cingulum which are present in the mandibular arch as well just in the case of the anterior teeth so you can see in the cervical third area of the canine of the mandibular lateral mandibular central then again mandibular central mandibular lateral and the canine you can see we have some cingulum which is present so cingulum is always present just in the anterior teeth it is not present in the case of the posterior teeth Now talking about the another kind of landmark that is known as a ridge, ridge is any linear elevation on the surface of a tooth that is named according to its location. So any linear elevation which we see on the tooth surface is known as a ridge. So we have different kind of ridges which we see like we have some buccal ridges, some incisal ridges and some marginal ridges and some other kind of ridges as well which we will be discussing in today's lecture. So starting with the first ridge that is known as the labial ridge. Now what does the word labial means? It's on the labial surface towards the lips. So the labial ridge is defined, it runs vertically in cervical incisal direction on the labial surface of the canine. So we can see here the green marked areas on the canines 
these are referred as the labial ridges so always the labial ridges are on the canines only so we can see here in this video demonstration that the labial ridges is running from the cervical line towards the incisal edge in the maxillary arch and in the mandibular arch as well from the cervical to the incisal edge now in the other two quadrants as well we can see it's running cervical incisally in both of the maxillary and mandibular quadrants canine now going on to another structure known as the buccal ridge now what is a buccal ridge the buccal ridge is similar to labial ridge it also runs vertically in cervical but in occlusal direction because it's just on the posterior teeth so it's running in the cervical occlusal direction on the buccal surface of the premolar so it's mainly prominent in the premolar so you can see the brown marked area is basically representing the buccal ridge so we can see in the video demonstration as the green marked area the cervical incisal one is marking for the labial whereas the brown marked area is basically marking for the buccal ridge because we use the word buccal for the posterior teeth now in the other two quadrants as well we can see the green marked area is basically representing the labial ridge on canines whereas the brown marked area is representing the buccal ridge on the premolars now this another kind of landmark another type of ridge is known as a lingual ridge so what does the word lingual means the ridge which is present on towards the tongue surface so it's it has a similar kind of definition it runs vertically in cervical incisal direction on a lingual surface of the canine this ridge is always on the lingual surface that's why we call it as a lingual ridge so as we see here in the video demonstration the green marked area is basically representing the lingual ridge area so we can see here it's present just on the canine so it's running in this cervical incisal direction on the canines on the lingual surface you can see on the lingual surface you can see from the cingulum to the incisal edge these lingual ridges are present both in the maxillary canines as well and in the mandibular canines as well so you can see a prominent elevation on the lingual surface of the canine the lingual ridges are more prominent in the case of the maxillary canine in comparison to the mandibular canine so you can see clearly it's present on all of the maxillary and both of the mandibular canines as well now the another landmark or another type of ridge which we will see it's known as a marginal ridge now what does the word marginal ridge means the rounded border of the enamel that form the mesial and distal margin of the occlusal surface of premolars and molars and the anterior teeth as well so we can see here we have different kind of black marks which are representing the marginal ridges okay so the margins margin what does the word margin means it makes it means it's making the border so we can see the black margin in the case of the central and lateral incisors and premolars and the canines so for the central incisor if you see this marginal ridge which are closer to the midline will be referred as mesial whereas the other one will be distal so we have mesial distal mesial distal marginal ridge in all of the teeth that is the premolars and the molars so you can see we have mesial distal mesial distal mesial distal marginal ridge in all of the pre incisors and premolar so this marginal ridge as this one is closer to the midline on the central incisor it will be referred as the mesial marginal ridge whereas the other marginal ridge on the central incisor of first quadrant it's away from the midline so we call it as the distal marginal ridge now similar to that on lateral incisor this marginal ridge will be it's closer to midline so we call it as mesial whereas the other one is away from the midline so we call that this marginal ridge on lateral incisor as the distal one so similarly on the other central incisor you have two marginal ridges mesial distal and on the premolars and molars of the second quadrant you will still have the mesial and distal marginal ridges now in the mandibular arch as well if you can see we have marginal ridges which are present on the central and lateral incisors and the premolars so you can see we have mesial distal mesial distal marginal ridges on the anterior teeth as well and on the posterior teeth of both of the third and fourth quadrant okay so individually we can label them and mark them so they basically they are making up the borders of the teeth so if you look at the central incisor of mandibular third quadrant you can see this marginal ridge which is closer to the midline which will be referred as the mesial marginal ridge okay and similarly in the fourth quadrant this marginal ridge which is 
uh, we will call it accordingly like these marginal ridges mesial distal mesial distal the one which is closer to the midline will be referred as the mesial marginal ridge whereas the me marginal ridge away from the midline will be referred as distal one now talking about another kind of a structure which is known as triangular ridges what are the triangular ridges triangular ridges descends from the tips of the cusp of the molars and premolars towards the central part of the occlusal surface you can see in this image you have two different type of triangular ridges on the premolars and molars so when we see in this video demonstration you can see we have some triangular ridges which are marked on the premolars so there are two types of triangular ridges if we see the one which is towards the buccal surface this triangular ridge which we are marking on the buccal cusp will be referred as buccal triangular ridge which has whereas this triangular ridge which are, we are marking on the lingual surface or the lingual cusp of premolar will be referred as the lingual triangular ridge similarly we have a triangular ridge present on the second premolar as well and on the first and second premolar of the second quadrant as well you can see they are quite clearly evident when you go in the mandibular arch you can again see we have many triangular ridges which are present on the premolars and molars which are clearly evident so you can see in the second premolar of the third quadrant you have the triangular ridge which is on the buccal cusp so we call it as the buccal triangular ridge whereas one on the lingual will be lingual again on the first we have buccal and the lingual triangular ridge now on the second molar you can see we have four triangular ridges in the third quadrant similarly in the fourth quadrant second molar as well we have four triangular ridges which we which are clearly evident now in the premolars of the fourth quadrant you can see we have still two two triangular ridges on both of the premolars now there is another kind of landmark known as a transverse ridge what is a transverse ridge the union of two triangular ridges crossing transversely the surface of posterior tooth is referred as a transverse ridge so when two triangular ridges as we see in the image they join together it's known as transverse ridge now the another landmarks we will which we will discuss is known as the oblique ridge so a ridge crossing obliquely the occlusal surface of maxillary molars and formed by union of triangular ridge of the distal buccal cusp and the dist distal cusp triangular ridge of distal buccal cusp and the distal cusp ridge of the mesiolingual cusp it's known as the oblique ridge so we can see it's clearly evident in the case of the maxillary first molar always the oblique ridge is more prominent in the maxillary first molar now talking about the fossa fossa is an irregular depression which we see on the case of the posterior teeth and the anterior teeth as well so we have different kind of fossas like known as the lingual fossa central fossa or the triangular fossa which we will be discussing in the coming slides starting with the first kind of fossa known as lingual fossa so the lingual fossa are on the lingual surface of the incisors and only the canine so you can see the yellow marked areas are basically representing the fossas which we see on the anterior teeth they are referred as the lingual fossa so on the incisors you have one fossa whereas in the canines you have two lingual fossas they are named accordingly so now looking at the video demonstration you can see these yellow marked areas in the case of the incisors and canines these are referred as the lingual fossas so they are named accordingly in the incisors in the central and lateral incisors they are just normally called as lingual fossa whereas if we call if we look for the canine which is the third tooth from the midline you can see we have two fossas in the case of the canine so the fossa which is closer to the midline this uh, we have two fossas in the maxillary canine so one fossa is the distal lingual fossa the other fossa which is closer to the midline will be referred as the mesiolingual fossa this is the mesiolingual this one is the distal lingual fossa as this lingual fossa on the canine it's away from the midline so we call it as the distal lingual fossa similarly in the mandibular arch as well you have many kinds of lingual fossa in the anterior teeth so you can see in the mandibular central and lateral incisor you have lingual fossa just one lingual fossa is on the mandibular central and the other one is on the mandibular lateral one both have one lingual fossas 
in the central and lateral mandibular incisor so you can see the yellow marked areas are representing the lingual fossas in the canines you can see again you have two lingual fossas so the lingual fossas in the canines which are present two in two in number they are named accordingly the lingual fossa which is closer to the midline which will, that will be referred as mesiolingual whereas the lingual fossa away from the midline will be distolingual this fossa is closer to the midline so mesiolingual this one is the distolingual fossa as this one is away from the midline so we call this lingual fossa on the canine as the distolingual fossa Now talking about another kind of fossa which is known as the central fossa. So the central fossa are on the occlusal surfaces of the molars only. They are formed by the convergence of ridges terminating at center point in the bottom of the depression where they, there is a groove, where is a junction of groove. So you can see the pink marked areas in the case of the first, second and third molars of the maxillary and mandibular arch. These are referred as the central fossa. So you can see it's clearly evident in the case of the first maxillary molar, second maxillary molar and then the third maxillary molar. Similarly, in the first, second and third maxillary molar of the second quadrant as well, you can see that uh, the ridges, the triangular ridges, they converge at one point and form up a hollow space with some grooves in the center. In the mandibular molars as well, you can see in the first, second and third molars, the pink marked areas are basically representing the central fossas in both of the quadrants that is the third and the fourth quadrant now going on to another kind of landmark known as the triangular fossa what does the word triangular means they must be triangular in shape so the triangular fossas are found on the molars and premolars only on the occlusal surfaces mesial or distal to the marginal ridges just mesially placed they are mesially placed either to the marginal ridge or they might be placed distally so the pink marred areas just adjacent to the marginal ridges these are referred as triangular fossa so they are named accordingly okay so we see these triangular fossas just on the occlusal surface so the occlusal surface is present on the premolars and molars only so you have two triangular fossas on each of the premolar and molar so you can see here the pink marked areas these are quite triangular in shape in all of the maxillary premolars and in the molars as well so looking at the first premolar you can see the fossa the triangular fossa which is closer to the midline this will be referred as the mesial triangular fossa whereas the triangular fossa away from the midline this will be referred as the distal triangular fossa again on the first second molars as well you have two fossas mesial distal and on the third molar as well you have mesial fossa closer to the midline and the distal fossa this was in away from the midline so these triangular fossas are quite like triangular in shape that's why we call them as the triangular fossa these are adjacent to the marginal ridges just they are lying adjacent to the marginal ridges beside the mesial marginal ridge or beside the distal marginal ridge on the occlusal surfaces of the posterior teeth so the fossa which you see in the first quadrant the triangular fossa they are also present in the molars and premolars of the second quadrant as well similar to that we see the triangular fossa which are present in the mandibular premolars and molars as well on the occlusal surface so you can see here in the case of the mandibular arch the mesial or triangular fossa is closer to midline whereas the distal triangular fossa it's away from the midline so you have mesial triangular fossa on the first molar and the distal triangular fossa on the first molar again all of the teeth have mesial distal mesial distal triangular fossa which are named accordingly according to their location if mesially placed we will call it as mesial triangular fossa whereas if distally placed they will be referred as the distal triangular fossa so the triangular fossa are quietly quite same in each of the quadrant that is a third and on the fourth quadrant as well that they are two in number now talking about the another kind of landmark that is the grooves so grooves so we start with the developmental groove the first kind of groove what is a groove 
a shallow groove or a line between the primary parts of the crown or root are referred as the groove so you can see in the central part of the premolars and molars the black marked line these are referred as the central grooves or you can call the developmental grooves as well so now looking at the video demonstration you can see a black line which is running in a mesiodistal direction in the case of the premolars and the molars of both maxillary and mandibular arts these are referred as the grooves so you can see in the premolar you have a black line which is present in the central part which is dividing the primary parts or the cuspal different cusp from each other these are referred as the groove so between the two buccal and lingual cusp in the premolars whereas in the case of the molars they are present in four between the four or the five cusps again in the second quadrant as well you can see you have this developmental groove which is present in the center portion dividing the tooth into different halves that is the buccal and the lingual half in the mandibular arch as well you can see we have a developmental groove or you can call it as the central developmental groove present in the center of the molars and the premolars both in the mandu in the premolars of the third quadrant and of the fourth quadrant as well so you can see a central developmental groove extending in the mesial to distal direction is present in the case of the premolars and the molars of the third quadrant and as well as the fourth quadrant as well so these black linings are basically showing a shallow groove or a depression present between the primary parts of the tooth. Now going on to another kind of groove that is known as the supplemental groove. Supplemental means it's like an extra groove. So supplemental to a developmental groove and does not mark the junction of primary parts so we can see some small minute blue linings which are marked in the uh, image these are referred as the supplemental grooves okay so these are extra grooves which we see on the occlusal surfaces of the posterior teeth so they are usually present in the case of the molars they are extensively present so in the case of premolars you can see the supplemental grooves are not evident but here this groove is referred as a supplemental groove this was the blue lining this blue lining is also representing the supplemental groove this is also the supplemental groove which are present in the case of the first second and the third molar now in the first second and third molar of second quadrant you can see these blue linings are referred as the supplemental grooves because these are the extra grooves which we see in the occlusal surfaces of the posterior teeth now the groove which is extending the green groove we will discuss later it's referring to the lingual groove because it's over the lingual surface whereas the groove which is extending on the buccal surface will be referred as the buccal groove we will see in the coming video demonstration these are these red linings are extending on the buccal surface so we refer them as the buccal groove Similar to the maxillary arch, we see the supplemental grooves which are present in an extensive number in the mandibular molars as well. So the blue linings, they are just extending to a small portion on the occlusal surface. These are referred as the supplemental grooves. You can see on the third molar, here you can see we have three supplemental grooves on the second molar. Again on the first molar, you can see we have some supplemental groove of both of the third and the fourth quadrant. Again on the second molar, you have some supplemental groove and on the third molar as well. Now again, if we see the red linings which are extending on the buccal surface, they will be referred as the buccal groove, whereas the green linings which are extending on the lingual surface of the molars, these will be referred as the lingual groove, which we will be discussing in the coming points or the com in the rest of the lecture. So the next type of groove which we will see now that is the buccal and the lingual groove which we discussed just now so looking at the just the images so the buccal groove and lingual groove are developmental grooves found on the buccal and lingual surfaces of the posterior teeth okay these buccal and lingual grooves are not present in the case of the premolars usually just sometimes you can see one of this groove in the case of the mandibular second premolar but usually they are just present in the case of the maxillary and mandibular molars so you can see the red linings which are extending on the buccal surface of the first molar and of the mandibular first molar as well. 
these are referred as the buccal groove so you have one one buccal groove in the case of the second molar and on the case of the third molar as well whereas in the case of the mandibular second you had two buccal groove similarly on the other side of the oral cavity you see you have buccal groove one buccal groove for maxillary molar and two buccal groove for the maxillary mandibular first molar now for the second and the third molar you have one buccal groove which is present now when you look at the lingual aspect of the maxillary arch you could see the green colored groove which is extending towards the palate or you can call towards the lingual surface so you have one lingual groove in the case of the maxillary molar which is clearly evident on the first and the second molar in the first quadrant similar similarly you have one groove in the first and second molar of the second quadrant as well of the maxillary arch now going on to the lingual surface of the molars in the mandibular arch you can see we have one lingual groove which is evident in the case of the third molars in the second molar and in the first molar as well in both of the quadrants that is the third and the fourth quadrant just one lingual groove the green colored line is evident in the mag uh, in the mandibular molars now going on to another kind of landmark after the grooves that is known as a pit now how we define a pit pit are small pinpoint depression located at the junction of developmental groove or at the terminals of those grooves so you can see at the end of the buccal and lingual groove we have some pinpoint depressions or in the center of the oral, uh, molars as well and the premolars you have some pinpoint depression these are referred as the pits so we name them accordingly the one which are closer to the midline are the mesial which are the other one which is away from the midline is distal pit so you can see here in the premolar you have two pits now in the case of the molars of the maxillary first molar you have three pits and then similarly in the second and the third molar you have three pits so these pits are named accordingly so the pit away from the midline will be the distal one this is the mesial pit on the first molar this is the central pit on the first molar whereas this one is the distal pit and this is the away from the midline now you have mesial central and the distal pit on second mesial pit central and the distal pit on the third molar as well similar to the maxillary arch you have some pits which are present in the mandibular arch as well so if you look at some pits we have pits which are at the terminal end of the mandibular first second and third molar so if you see here we have a distal pit which is at the terminal end of the groove you have a central pit then you have the mesial pit now in the premolars as well you can see in the mandibular arch you have two pits mesial and distal pit okay in the first premolar that was clearly evident similarly you have mesial distal pits and all of the premolars and the molars now going on to the another kind of the landmark that is known as the mamelon so mamelon is any one of the three protuberances found on the incisal edges of newly erupted incisor teeth so you can see here the newly erupted incisor teeth have three mamelons if we appreciate here in this image so usually these are the sharp ends which are only seen in the newborn babies when the new teeth have erupted into the oral cavity now the another kind of landmark which we see it's known as a lobe so a lobe is one of the primary now the another landmarks which we will see it's known as a sulcus so the sulcus is a long valley or in the surface of the tooth between the ridges and the cusp that inclines and meet at an angle so we can see this red mark area it's basically representing the hollow surface between two cusps okay this portion this hollow surface is basically referred as 